Today we're going to try something really crazy. 23.9, close enough. These are very close to true O scale. You don't want to try this with a modern transformer. So this is based off of a real B&O caboose from 1916 up to 1938. That is not helpful. Now it is truth or consequences time. Part of the circuit is running through this wire arm here. Very simple but effective animation for the layout. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today we are looking at some of the different methods that you can use to wire controllers to Lionel 027 uh, remote turnouts. So uh, oftentimes you'll come across these at a show and you don't have the original parts, you don't have the original controllers. Um, so what are some options? Uh, and if you do have them and they're not wired up, how do you wire them up? So first let's take a look at the turnout itself, how it works and how the wiring works. And that'll give you some ideas. Uh, even if you don't uh, like what I have, you can come up with your own once you know how these things work. So your basic switch machine is what we call a solenoid. In this case, we have two electromagnets, one that controls each direction. And if I throw it this way, you'll see right here is our metal rod that goes through the solenoids. And so uh, when you throw it one way, this magnet pulls the rod this way, this magnet pulls the rod that way, and through our mechanism that controls which direction the switch points up here move by activating one or the other. So for these, the hot side uh, is common to both electromagnets and that is tied um, to the center rail on these O27 switches. For regular O gauge switches, uh, you have the option of uh, either having them tied to the center rail or you can use a um, fixed voltage plug which ties them directly into a transformer source. O27s are not wired up that way. They don't have that option from the factory. Uh, but in a later video, I'll show you how to uh, fix yours if you so choose to uh, use that option, how to rewire them. So, um, so really what we're doing is we're controlling the ground side, the common side, uh, and that is gonna complete the circuit to go to either solenoid. And so with that, it is tied to the center rail. Uh, here you see my transformer power here. I have one here, one here. So this is just wired up through the rails, just like if you had installed it. Um, keep in mind, I don't have, since I don't have any other track tied up here, I don't have the fiber pins in. That's, uh, you can watch, watch the other video on how to install the fiber pins and where those go. Um, but since I don't have any other track attached, I don't need them in this point. So your Lionel controller, it may look like this. This is an MPC one. Some, uh, there's several different designs, but the basic function, this is what we call a single pole, double throw, momentary contact switch. And what this does is the, there are three wires coming out of our controller. The center wire actually is this one. This one is tied to our outside rails. The power comes from here into the switch, into this outside rail and to the controller. The controller then selects which of these two wires activates to complete the circuit. So you have a single pole, one choice, you're controlling one circuit, double throw this way or this way, momentary contact and that it springs back to the middle. So if you like these, you can find these, um, you know, it shows replace them with the original equipment or whatever. I don't like them because um, I use, uh, for me, they use up just too much space on the control panel. So here are some other options. One, you can find a smaller single pole, double throw, momentary contact switch toggle. Um, this one's actually double pole. I don't have a single pole. This is a double pole. That's why there's two sets of contacts, but there'll be one set of contacts, three points, 
your common goes to the middle, and then whichever direction you're going, connect to the two outside. And as you move your toggle, can't see it here, it will spring back. Uh, not showing up really well on the video, but it does spring back to the middle position. And then I would wire that up just like I did these. Another option, and the one that I like, is instead to use push buttons. They come in very, you know, lots of different sizes. This is a really big one. And then these are the small ones that I use. And I like these for a couple of reasons. One, uh, two of these are cheaper, usually, than one of the momentary contact switches. Uh, and two, I can put these on my control panel right on my track wiring diagram. And so um, the dispatcher, whether it's a guest operator or a child or just anyone, uh, you can just follow the track diagram. And as you come to the direction you want the switch to throw, you just hit any buttons along the way and throw the proper turnouts in the proper direction. So what you have here is two contacts. One side, doesn't matter which, goes to your regular common. Whether you tie that from the switch to here or whether you go off the transformer common uh, or, you know, if you're using common wiring with multiple transformers phased together, as long as it goes to the layout common anywhere, doesn't matter. And then the other side ties to the appropriate side of the turnout to make it turn in that direction. Um, and you'll need two of them, one for each direction on the turnout. So I'm going to temporarily rig this up just to show you how it works. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've got now. I have left my hot wire from the transformer to the center rail because, again, the power for the solenoids is wired to the center rail. So I need that for the hot side. The ground side, you notice I've, totally, I've disconnected that from the switch. This post now becomes uh, redundant. Um, and also, I don't have it wired up to the track either. So you would say, well, how is the uh, how is the common going to get to the solenoids? And that is because I have attached uh, my buttons, one side of my buttons, to a common ground wire coming off of my transformer. So now, uh, and then each of these, so the white wire is the ground, the common, and the yellow wire goes one each from each button to one side of the turnout. So now, now obviously this is a temporary just for display. Um, these buttons I, I would mount permanently in a panel. You see the, the screw tabs here. You just drill a hole, push this through, and uh, there is hardware included to tighten that down to the panel to permanently mount them. Um, but this, just for demonstration purposes, to show you how it can be done. Um, so all I do is when I press a button, it is going to complete the circuit on that side and throw the turnout. Now I need to do the other side, throw the turnout. And again, this could be accomplished with a single pole, double throw, momentary contact. Um, oh, my wire came loose. There we go. Um, or you can do it with the two push buttons. I prefer the push buttons, but you can do whatever. And so um, as you say, well, what about running trains? Well, yes, for running trains, you would need the common attached to the outside rail. But as long as the common is commonly wired, um, if you're using multiple transformers, you need to phase um, your power source uh, with your um, train power source. There's another video um, to show how to phase those. Uh, or if you're just using one power pack and one is coming off of the accessory tap, the constant voltage, and the track power is coming off of the variable voltage. Uh, you're fine with that. Um, what I do now that this tab is redundant is um, I will use this, since this attaches to the outside rails, I will wire my track common to this post to provide a, uh, an additional power feed to the common uh, to make sure that there is good electrical continuity through the turnout. That is totally optional, but that's what I do with it. Uh, you could leave it blank as long as your common is coming from somewhere, whether it's coming from the track, like it is with your regular Lionel controller, or whether it's coming from the transformer, 
Uh, the common just has to come somewhere, and then you need some method. Oh, my wire's loose again. Again, just a temporary setup here. And works with that. Uh, something else I'll show you real quick is on these small connections now, um, what I prefer instead of, uh, you can solder these uh, the wires to these, put them through that little hole and solder. I prefer these female connectors, these quick connects. One, um, I can crimp and solder that for a really good connection. I haven't done that here because this was temporary. I just wrapped tape around it to keep it from sliding. And it just slides right on there. Now there are different sizes of these for different posts. So depending on what type of button you're using, will you use different sizes? But once you find the size, again, you can connect them, disconnect them. If you make a mistake somewhere and you want to rewire it, it's real easy to you know, disconnect it and change it around to the way you want. Um, and, uh, you know, for someone with older eyes like myself, trying to hit those little bitty holes and trying to keep everything insulated one from the other, notice you've got insulator on here. So when these are in here, it maintains the gap and um, provides an insulator on the bottom to help keep things from uh, getting short circuited. So I really like those. That's a, another little tip on there. So here we go. These again is how to multiple methods, how to wire up your Lionel 027 turnouts. Um, if you don't like the original controller, or maybe you don't have the original controller and need to build your own controller, this is the way to do it. So that's all for now. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, like it, comment, subscribe, share, and keep the trains running. We'll see you next time.